Okay, it's what do you know or what are we going to tell you today? Welcome to this edition of the Native News Update. I'm your host again for today's program, Paul Domain. Many of the stories and information found here can be found at our website at www.indiancountrynews.com where your online membership or donation helps support the development of this TV station. Here's the news for the day from the Associated Press and other Native American news sources. The Saginaw Chippewa Tribal Council is instituting a pay freeze through the end of the year. The Mount Pleasant, Michigan Morning Sun reports that the council has frozen merit pay increases and pay grade adjustments. The Saginaw Chippewa Tribe is Isabel County, Michigan's biggest employer with about 4,000 employees. The tribe operates the Soaring Eagle Casino and Resort and other businesses. Tribal spokesman Joe Sawmick said the pay freeze affects all tribal employees. The pay, pay freeze comes in the wake of last fall's buyouts aimed at reducing the staff at the resort and casino. The casino and resort reduced its workforce by more than 100 people last fall through the voluntary buyouts. The FBI and Navajo Tribal Police are investigating the deaths of two people on what authorities believe was a gang-related shooting on the reservation on New Mexico. Two others were critically injured. Investigators didn't immediately release the victims' identities. FBI Supervisory Special Agent Todd Halsey said the shooting occurred this last Saturday, February 7th, at Caz Amero Lake, about 60 miles east of Gallup, and five people tied to localized gang activity on the reservation were then taken into custody. The lawyer for one of two men charged with the 1975 slaying on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation wants the indictment dismissed on grounds it violates the, his client's due process rights. John Graham and Richard Marshall have both pled not guilty to charges they committed or aided and abetted the first-degree murder of Anna Mae Pictou Aquash on or around December 11, 1975. Another man, Arlo Looking Cloud, was convicted in the year 2004 for his role in the murder. According to defense counsel motions, Looking Cloud has been cooperating with federal authorities, including providing details about who provided the weapon used to kill Aquash. Marshall's attorney, Dana Hanna, filed a motion to dismiss the charges recently because Hanna says prosecutors in the year 2004 alleged that Looking Cloud supplied the murder weapon, but now say Marshall provided it. During the 2004 trial of Arlo Looking Cloud, witness Richard Two Elk described a conversation in which Looking Cloud told Two Elk he had the gun at the Wombly, South Dakota execution site of Aquash, but could not shoot her, so he handed, handed it to John Graham, who did. Federal authorities have alleged that Richard Marshall provided the gun and shells for the killing. Previous News from Indian Country investigative interviews indicate that event did not occur at Wombly, but during a closed-door bedroom meeting in Marshall's Pass Creek home on the Rosebud Reservation, some time before Graham, Looking Cloud, and Theta Nelson Clark left his home and drove north to Wombly. Court records do not indicate who federal prosecutors allege Marshall may have handed uh, the gun and shells to at his home. Marshall's wife at the time in 1975, Cleo Gates, testified in 2004 that when Looking Cloud, Graham, and Clark came to their house with Aquash, the trio met with Marshall in the back bedroom of their home while she stayed with Aquash. When asked by federal prosecutors, Gates said she did not believe that any weapons were kept in the house at that time because Marshall was then awaiting sentencing on a different murder charge. Hannah says in order to prove its theory against Marshall, the government will now have to disprove what it argued before juror, jurors in an appellate court in the Looking Cloud case. Advocates in the campaign to boost salmon runs returns to the Klamath River in Oregon have sued to force the California Department of Fish and Game to update rules allowing hobby gold mining in salmon streams. The lawsuit filed recently in Superior Court in Alameda, California, is the latest chapter in efforts by salmon fishermen and tribes to reverse declines that have practically shut down West Coast salmon fishing the last couple of years. 
The lawsuit argues that the department is aware that a method called suction dredge mining can destroy salmon eggs as it sucks stream gravel through a process to sort out the gold. It argues a lack of money is no excuse for failing to obey a court order to reevaluate the rules. A suburban Detroit developer says it's working with a Native American tribe to develop a casino in St. Joseph's County, Michigan, near the Indiana border. The Sturgis Journal and WWMT-TV report Bloomfield Hayes, uh, Hills based Vanguard Entertainment LLC announced on February 5th it seeks to build the casino and other retail developments on 200 acres with, within, an undis, uh, with an undisclosed tribe. Vanguard President John Weaver was expected to attend a city commission meeting soon with a tribal representative to discuss the proposal further. One of the winners at the 51st Annual Grammy Awards was one of our own, the Native American music album, Come To Me Great Mystery, Native American Healing Songs, by various artists came out on top. The CD was produced by Tom Wasinger on the Silver Wave label. President Barack Obama has appointed a member of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe to serve in his administration. Jody Gillette was selected on February 5th to be the Deputy Associate Director of the Office of Intergovernmental Affairs, where she will help oversee tribal, local, and state relationships with the federal government. Gillette is the director of the Native American Training Institute in North Dakota. She also served as Obama's North Dakota vote director during the 2008 presidential campaign. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank our underwriters for helping us with this broadcast and our digital mall partners who continue to grow in number, powwows.com, nativeview.com, nishtv.com, whitebison.org, twoelkenterprise.com, gonativeamerica.com, and the On Native Ground program from sunny California. Thanks for joining with us today. We'll see you again soon.